everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, with the world population slated to touch around 9.7 billion by 2050 as per a UN report. World over, people are discussing the challenges of food production, which needs to at least double for us to cater to such a huge population. But to direct our attention a bit towards second most important basic necessity, that is clothing, the challenges there too are far from addressed. It is said that with much of world's arable land already under cultivation, clothing the human population with natural fiber textiles in 2050 means fiber production on existing farmland needs to triple, which is a huge milestone to reach for sure. And this needs to be simultaneously with reducing the negative impact on ecology that cotton production is known to have. Cotton farming uh, accounts for around 4.7% of world's pesticides and around 10% of insecticide sale. Now we do have 1% of farmers resorting to organic farming, but it is too negligible to be considered. It is pretty imperative from these facts that cotton sustainability opportunity and challenge is in re-evaluating the conventional 99% rather than expanding the 1%. Though the global reach of cotton is wide, with the cotton production methods being environmentally unsustainable today, it ultimately undermines the industry's ability to maintain future production. Also, it is estimated that 6 million farmers are engaged in cotton farming. How do we bring about this huge mindset change to move towards sustainability? Can digitization pave the way? These are some of the questions people we intend to address today. And I'm Richa Nair from Arya Biolife Sciences. And with me, I have an impressive list of panelists here who bring to table their decades of experience in the field of textile fiber we call cotton. Well, uh, first let us welcome Dr. Kadir. Welcome, welcome, uh, welcome Dr. Kadir. It is great to connect with you again. Uh, he represents BCI Better Cotton Initiative, which is working extensively with farmers today and it is world's leading sustainability initiative for cotton. Today, better cotton is grown in 26 countries around the world and accounts for around 20% of global cotton production. In 2021 cotton season, 2.2 million licensed better cotton farmers grew 4.7 million metric tons of better cotton, which is quite an achievement. Very glad to have you, sir, on the panel. Thank you very much. Uh... Nisha, I equally understand that the topic that was really interesting, that was something which hit me, that I think it was the invitation went to some of our uh, colleagues in India team, and then uh, they shared with our global team. So I being responsible for the digitalization in my organization, so I was asked to, you know, participants, I had a look at the title and I said that, yes, this is something. <laughs> this uh, is something to be. Yeah, and the people, are there to talk on this very important subject and happy to contribute and happy to share uh, my thoughts. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Great, great. I'm sure we'll have an interesting conversation uh, ahead as such. So uh, next on our list is uh, Dr. Bhosle. Welcome, Dr. Bhosle. He heads KVK, which is the Krishi Vikas Kendra of Parmani, which has around 14 to 15,000 farmers associated with it, and it covers around 65 villages, wherein cotton is one of the major crops. He has been working with farmers since the last couple of decades and has tons of ground experience in which we are going to dig deep into today. Welcome, sir. I hope you're able to hear me, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. It's a great pleasure with you. I'm very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Bhosle sir. I hope ki hum aapko field se nahi, uh, aapke, uh, field trip se nahi rok rahe hai. I think sowing season aapka shuru ho chuka hai. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, next, uh, we do have another uh, uh, impressive personality out here. We have Mr. J.P. Tripathi, who is from... Uh, Madhwani AI, Mr. J.P. Tripathi is an accomplished professional with a diverse background and a strong expertise in the field of technology and management. Currently, Mr. Tripathi is Associate Director at Madhwani AI, uh, where he speaks innovative projects and drives operational excellence also in the cotton farming space. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for uh, joining us. We all are aware of how much work uh, Madhwani AI is doing in cotton as such. Uh, I'm sure uh, it will be great to hear from you as well. Uh -huh. Uh, thank you, Richard. Thank you, everyone, for the invitation. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, like, uh, with the expertise of uh, Dr. Prashant and all, Mr. Shakadir here, I think 
it's going to be a good learning experience for me as well. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm sure we're going to have a constructive discussion out here. Yeah. Yeah. And we also have Dr. Ashwini Motafale here with us. Dr. Ashwini is a doctorate in entomology by education and has been with Ketibadi since inception. Her expertise lies in making complex science concepts in an easy to understand language to farmers. She specializes in extension activities and her recent project has been with KVK Parvani, where she has worked with around 2000 farmers digitizing the extension activities for cotton farming. Glad to have you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. And it's a nice platform to share my experience with KVK. Yes, Thank you yes. so much. Thank you. I'm sure your ground experience is going to help us out here as well. Sure, sure. So uh, welcome everyone. So thank you for joining in and especially on time. Uh, I would like to start, uh, you know, with the representative of the organization, which has taken a huge target of reducing synthetic pesticides by around 50% till 2030 amongst farmers associated with them, which is uh, BCI, of course. So, uh, Dr. Kalir, uh, you know, we are talking a lot about sustainability and the negative impact that, uh, you know, cotton cultivation is having on the uh, climate and, uh, you know, the, uh, the pesticide usage and all of that. And the environmentalists are, of course, raising this to be a burning issue. But since you deal a lot with the corporate side of it, do you think there is a rising need there too to address this issue of like unsustainable cultivation practices for their raw material? Thank you. I think uh, now we can say yes. Uh, yeah, because I think now is the time when the climate change has become so evident. Right. And the results of that, effects of that are reaching to every common man and right. as well as to farmers as well. So, for example, be it change in climate, uh, increase in temperatures, change in uh, season, which is not allowing farmer to understand when they should start sowing and when they should be doing cultivation. And then the sequence of events which is happening uh, in terms of abrupt and you can say disruptive uh, climate events, the frequency has increased so much that now everyone is facing that across the supply chain, not only farmers, uh, even at the very top level, the realization has been very strong that, okay, there is a need for uh, to go for sustainable solutions. And perhaps that's the core reason why Better Cotton is also here. It's a membership organization, which means that it, it whatever Better Cotton is doing is basically the mandate of all those members who are part of that. And a major part of that does include uh, the big brands and you know supply chain actors, which are now very conscious about sustainability and overall sustainability in the cotton supply chain, not only the production side, but the rest of the side as well. So I can definitely say that now uh, we are in that positive time that the realization has been really strong in terms of moving to sustainable solutions, understanding what sustainability means related to cotton, and then finding solutions, finding technologies which can come up, help us, you know, measure that sustainability change and monitor that sustainability change. So that's my point of view. Thank you. Right, right. So, uh, I mean, since the impact is now reaching, you know, right to the lowest, uh, you know, completely every member of the chain. So, you know, everybody has to like wake up to uh, yes. take the proper steps as such. So, yeah, that's great. And I do see that, you know, you have big names like H&M, Levi's or uh, Marks and Spencer's, you know, on your board. So uh, do these big corporates, do they have a mandate? Have they set in a mandate or something for, uh, you know, taking these steps or having uh, to see some kind of a change in, uh, you know, when they're sourcing their raw material per se? Yeah, it is very much there. They are actually asking the demand side has really increased a lot. They are asking for sustainable cotton. It's very clear uh, demand from them. They are asking for traceability. They want to know who is producing the cotton, how the cotton is being produced, how the sustainability uh, dimension has been taken care into that, whether it is about water safety, whether it is about, um, you know, decent work, whether it is about soil health, they're asking for all those parameters to be taken care. So definitely in market demand for sustainable cotton has really, really grown. And that's why better cotton does exist, um, if I say. Right. Yeah. 
Right. So good. So uh, I just, uh, I would like to go to uh, Mr. Tripathi here, uh, you know, who, who works a lot with, uh, you know, Vatani, you, you, you people work a lot directly with the farmer as such. So when all these corporates are talking about, you know, sustainable and uh, sustainable, they want to source sustainable cotton. And on one side, we are saying that, you know, the farmer is using something like 16% of the total pesticides that are being used. But I'm sure that, you know, there is a reason why he's using so many pesticides. I mean, you know, there is, I'm sure that there are certain challenges on ground which lead to such wide application of pesticides. So, you know, why, why are these, what are these main challenges that a farmer normally faces on ground, if we can just understand that a bit? I think just to uh, put it in the context, one need to understand the basic extension model that has started working on is like the green revolution concept wherein people started talking about the more you put in the inputs, the more outputs you will get. Correct. That's the concept which kind of got ingrained in the mindset of the hum human being. And right. Like farmer as such is not away from that whole setup. So, so their idea is like, if at all I'm like, you have to take a risk, then why not to take it as with the input so that at least I will have something at my hand and Will be able to sell it and ensure the food security for the family. Okay. I mean, with the growing things and the technology, the, the way things have changed, I think the um, efforts from everybody, whether it is the, uh, I mean, just to take an example of BCI, because I was part of an organization which was working in BCI prior to this organization. So we were like implementing organizations. So I, I'm a bit of the concept of uh, BCI as well. So BCI, when it came in, it said, okay, you do whatever you are doing, but try to improve it from whatever you're doing. So, I mean, just take smaller steps, move gradually. And if you are able to bring in the tech part of it, I think it's wonderful, go ahead and do it. And from our side, what we are doing, trying to do is find out a solution which can actually help the farmer in the way which he understands. And which is like easily doable, easily manageable. And if, if they are able to do it, I mean, nothing better than that but if there is some requirement to help them or help them understand i think that's where we as an organization come in train them to understand that the concept of more input gives you more output has actually changed i think it's time when you start looking at the optimizing this uh, inputs and maximizing the outputs so i think that is the i mean uh, i can say the uh, change that has to understand or kind of pushed at the uh, farmer level and I think as an organization and all the people here, that's the way the struggle starts. So how do we, as an extension system, how do we do that? As a uh, funding agency, how do we support that? And as a tech agency, how do we kind of facilitate that process? So that's all, that's the, uh, I would say the ecosystem that every player has to play its role and make that happen. Correct, correct. Um, right. So, uh, and I think, I think, uh, you know, you also, when you were talking earlier, I think you also mentioned that, uh, you know, since uh, pests are a big issue with cotton, uh, you know, you have developed a technology wherein, uh, you know, from pheromone traps, you are able to tell them, uh, you know, how many, what is the level of infection uh, is something that you are already doing, right? Sure. So basically, yeah. uh, the... Uh... I mean, pheromone trap is not a very uh, Sir, uh, Tripathi sir, it can be a little louder. I think that okay. would be... Uh... Okay. Sure. So uh, basically, pheromone trap is not a very new concept. I mean, pheromone traps have been uh, like in use for almost like years. In right. that detail, sir. But the point is, for even a farmer to use that pheromone trap, and then, so he can see, yes, there is a pest catch, but what after that? So he right. has to reach to a scientist or, pe or an extension worker, where mm -hmm. they will kind of guide him how to, uh, what the pesticide or what is the mechanism that we need, they need to follow. But what, with the technology, what we are trying to do is, we are trying to reduce that time frame wherein farmer will have to reach out to an extension officer or to a scientist, wherein if a farmer is actually having a uh, smartphone at his home and has installed, say, two pheromone traps, he just take the image of that uh, catch and the pheromone trap and he gets the advisory. And what the basic logic that we have used here is the uh, kind of the scientific logic of ETL. That's the uh, almost, I can say, the best uh, available scientific. Uh, 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 actually, uh, take a call on that. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the age of the crop, we have uh, tried to change it to the, you know, uh, I mean, uh, 
the advisory has to uh, use the matrix of age of the crop and the ETL. So that's where uh, farmers are able to kind of get the advisory. And more importantly, uh, the kind of advisory that we are promoting is uh, not using the, uh, you say, the toxic substance right at the beginning, trying to use or trying to convey the, that the, you know, there are organic solutions to it or the mechanical solutions that they can actually use. And yes, when the time kind of, they are late into the process of adopting it or our infestation is too heavy, that's the time when we actually go for an advisory, which is more toxic. And so with the basic results that we have seen for last couple of seasons, we have seen that at least families on an average is able to reduce on a, uh, you know, 10 to 15 percent of this pesticide consumption. Which is that like, is, say, that's, a, that's a huge number. I mean, reducing, uh, uh, you know, pesticide usage by 10 to 15 percent is like, it is is big as well. Huge. And you scale it up, it will be like really big. And more importantly, what is happening at a farmer's level is that because he's able to get the advisory right at time, I mean, instantly he gets the advisory. The advantage that they have is they don't have to wait for those two, three to four days wherein uh, general advisory comes in. Um, I mean, I'm not sure that everybody will be so lucky to have Dr. Prashantinan around there where they can actually reach out to him. But the point is, for the people right. who are able to reach out to uh, scientists like these, I think it is good to have an, uh, you know, uh, this kind of technology where they can actually get the advisory instantly. And it is actually saving a lot of uh, on the quality aspect and not more importantly, it is actually saving the crop, which actually ultimately results into the income. Right, right, right. Thank you so much. So, uh, yes, so, you know, there are, so there are, uh, you know, uh, methodologies available wherein we can, uh, you know, uh, check the pesticides a little aside and uh, move on to some of the biological or uh, say other cultural uh, methodologies, which will help us, you know, reduce pesticides. I would like to go to uh, you know Dr. Bhosle here. Uh, Bhosle sir, I mean, हम ये बहुत सारी बातें कर रहे हैं environmental issues, uh, you know, जो हम create कर रहे हैं biological solutions कर रहे हैं, so that हम pesticide थोड़ा कम कर सकें. लेकिन uh, you know farmer के end पे वो impact देख रहे हैं वो लोग या उनको awareness है या वो लोग sustainable practices की तरफ जाना चाहते हैं uh, मतलब आपको क्या लगता है आप इतने farmer से day in day out deal करते हो so uh, किस तरह का awareness है आज की तारीख में farmers well, definitely मैडम अभी farmers जो है actually uh, उन्हें जो कुछ हम यहां पे एक्सटेंशन के तो जो सिखाते हैं तो उन्हें पता चल गया है कि ईटीएल एक एक चीज है जो यहां पे हमें देखना चाहिए हमें कुछ काउंट करना चाहिए कि ईटीएल यानी कि उनको बेनिफिशियल इंसेक्ट हार्मफुल इंसेक्ट इसके बारे में अभी पता चल रहा है तो उन्हें पता चल रहा है कि अभी सॉइल डिग्रेडेशन है जो they are using uh, uh, abhi use kar rahe hai aur us farmer to farmer extension bhi ho raha hai yahan pe to bahut zyada is pe bhi bio pesticide ka use yahan pe ho raha hai particularly pehle 30 40 din jo cotton ke jo rehte hai crop to wahan pe unhone ye pesticide bio pesticide use karne ki wajah se near about 3 to 4 springs ki skip ho gaye jo jo later hote hai aur kuch dusre problems bhi avoid ho gaye jaise ki white fly ka problem hai wo bhi thoda avoid ho gaya wahan pe to bio pesticide ka trend abhi badh raha hai so awareness bird rahi hai. I'm sure there are few progressive farmers who ki is in cheezon ko zada achche se adapt kar rahe hain. So uh, sir, aap aaj ki tarik mein matlab aap jaise hum kehte hain ki aap se around 14 se 15,000 farmers aur jude huye hain. So uh, jab aapko ye information in farmers ke paas le jani hoti hai, jaise hum bol rahe hain ki bio pesticides ya jaise abhi Tripathi sir ne bataya tha ki unhone kuch pheromone traps. Uh, based एक technology बनाई है जो कि हम अगर farmers तक ले जाना चाहते हैं तो आप आज की तारीख में किस तरह से uh, इन farmers तक ये information आप पहुंचाते हो सबसे बढ़िया tool है the demonstration is the major uh, uh, extension tool है वहाँ पे जो हम यहाँ पे method demonstration और result demonstration के जरिए वहाँ पे पहुँचते हैं लेकिन उसी के साथ उनको training proper training और जो हम उस लिटरेचर अगर उद्देश्य के तो ये बहुत अच्छी बात है इसी इसी के बारे में लास्ट ईयर जो हमने एक कंबाइनली जो प्रोजेक्ट किया था डिजिटल फार्मिंग का विद खेती बड़ी तो बहुत इफेक्टिव रहा है उसी कारण से क्योंकि प्रॉपर इंफॉर्मेशन एट राइट टाइम एट राइट वे अगर उन्हें पता चली तो वो फार्मर्स वहां पे कर सकते हैं 
तो फिर हम डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन वहां पे अरेंज करते हैं थ्रू आउट द क्रॉप पीरियड हम उन्हें कंसिस्टेंटली ये करते हैं ट्रेन करते हैं और उसके बारे में बता देते तो फार्मर को डिस्टिंग टू रिजल्ट अगर वहां पे मिल गए तो डेफिनेटली वो एडॉप्शन की तरफ जाते हैं सो so, ये ये डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन वगैरह आप अपने एक्सटेंशन वर्कर्स के थ्रू कराते हैं हाँ केवी के में टीम है पूरी मल्टी डिसिप्लिन टीम है वहाँ पे तो हर एक डिसिप्लिन के यहाँ पे एक्सपर्ट्स है तो हम एक्चुअली ऑन फार्म डेमोन्स्ट्रेट करते हैं फार्मर्स के लिए और लार्ज स्केल डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन यहाँ पे लेते हैं और डिस्टिंगटिव फीचर के लिए एक सबसे बढ़िया जो टूल है वो है अपना फील्ड सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ फील्ड इन बिग वे हम वहाँ पे करते हैं तो डिस्टिंगटिव फीचर अगर दिखाना है फार्मर्स को और अदर फार्मर्स को भी तो एक अच्छा जरिया है तो हम फील्ड एक बहुत बढ़िया यहाँ पे ऑर्गेनाइज करते हैं वहाँ पे डिस्ट्रिक्ट कलेक्टर भी यहाँ पे पार्टिसिपेट करते हैं बहुत जगह पे फील्ड डे के लिए तो ऐसे कुछ टूल्स है जहाँ जहाँ पे हम काम करते हैं और फार्मर्स के लिए जो कुछ टेक्नोलॉजी रिकमेंडेड टेक्नोलॉजी है वहां तक सस्टेनेबल प्रोडक्शन के लिए तो ये सब जरिए हम यहाँ पे यूज करते हैं अच्छा और एक एक जैसे आपका एक जो एक्सटेंशन वर्कर होता है वो कितने फार्मर्स से जुड़ा रहता है नियर अबाउट थ्री हंड्रेड टू फोर हंड्रेड फार्मर्स अच्छा वो थ्री हंड्रेड टू फोर हंड्रेड फार्मर्स को ये करता है बेसिकली सो मिस्टर त्रिपाठी यू नो दिस इज हाउ टुडे थिंग्स आर वर्किंग एंड यू नो एंड नॉलेज डेफिनेटली नीड्स टू बी पास ऑन फ्रॉम द डिफरेंट स्टेक होल्डर्स टू फार्मर एज वेल and this has been now tried out as uh, dr bosley has explained to us through extension workers so is there any other way you feel or are you are you using any other model to reach out on farmers or are you working on any model uh, so that you can reach out to as many farmers as you can uh, i think uh, my voice is clear much better now yeah slightly but if you can switch off your video also that should be that would be okay like you know so audio will be uh, okay. slightly better. sure yeah so uh, i suppose it's better now yeah well um the basic model i mean that we are actually using is the very simple and uh, what mr bosley has suggested that is the same extension worker model that we are also using so it's like we are also reaching out to the partners partner organizations who are there working in the field with the bci cotton or organic cotton or any other form of uh, you know uh, whether it is government machinery that we are reaching out to so the idea is to use the current existing model and apart from that we are also pushing the solution uh, when i say solutions like the application that we have created the cotton is uh, application that we have uh, created we are pushing it out through i mean there's a mass uh, communication efforts also that we are uh, putting in so idea is the more it reaches or the people start talking about it i mean that's the uh, basic uh, you know the premise on which we Uh, we are floating this whole uh, solution and um, yeah i think beyond this uh, i don't see much uh, of a scope of you know uh, putting across or reaching out to the farmers but what we have done smartly here is we have actually uh, uh, created small modules of uh, uh, you know uh, training or modules within the application itself where actually farmer once he has he has downloaded or she has downloaded the application they will be able to understand how to use the application so it's a more about the idea of just spreading the word once it is done i mean they will be able to understand it from their uh, from the uh, videos that has been uploaded there and the articles that have been placed there and uh, most importantly all these are in regional languages so in whichever state of india uh, these uh, partners are there or the farmers are there they will be able to understand in their own uh, regional language right and it uh, i i suppose it's a free application that can be uh, yes, done yes. by farmers much, yeah it's, it's very much free application and uh, Uh, like uh, anybody uh, can uh, use it but the only uh, there will be a basic uh, registration process that happens and apart from that then nothing is there so farmer doesn't have to worry about the uh, data privacy and all right right so uh, you know uh, that is that is that is great actually you know if the farmer is uh, able to use it uh, you know on his own and because then the reach obviously uh you know it is is multifold as such right. so uh, i think uh, what uh, dr posley was talking about as well chali last in kashmini Digitize. 
So what were the major barriers? I mean, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, it's not like an urban landscape. We are dealing with a rural landscape here where we, we are not, uh, we don't know if, uh, you know, people are as much aware of the, you know, uh, user friendly interface and how to use it. So, you know, what, what were the barriers that you faced on gra ground, which, you know, which uh, actually stopped you from spreading the technology or were major, uh, you know, hurdles in spreading the technology out there? Yeah, uh, uh, of course, ma'am, as you said, uh, we were working uh, to the rural areas and it's a very small villages, we can say. Normally, people are not able to reach over the calls there. I think um, I think we lost uh, Ashwini man there. Uh, Postal sir, ye jo digitization ka program chala tha aapke yahan par. So, uh, matlab ye farmers ne adapt kiya tha is cheez ko uh, kis tarah se? How did it pan out for you? Actually, uh, we have planned for for three thousand farmers. Okay. But uh, we are able to uh, onboard only two thousand farmers due to the uh, other problem like uh, internet uh, facilities is not there. Proper Android mobile is not there like this. So, those farmers who have on board, and there is particularly the farm app, the application has a initial stage, a problem with the registration. But as we have the application, we have a lot of training for the farmers, so they have installed the application. The application installation has a problem with the weak link case, but when it has been installed, the farmers have started. फिर नेहरा बट 2000 फार्मर्स के साथ काम किया हमने तो उन्हें कोई दिक्कत नहीं है पर अच्छा यानी इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी या कभी स्मार्टफोन नहीं है ये मेजर चैलेंजेस वहाँ पर आते हैं यस यस Okay, okay. So uh, I'm sure uh, because I mean स्मार्टफोन यूसेज इज़ आल्सो इंक्रीजिंग मल्टीफोल्ड इन रूरल इंडिया एस वेल सो आई एम श we can we can, this particular barrier can also be addressed uh, in in some time as I'm sure as time passes. So uh, Tripathi sir, did, did you also face similar issues like uh, you know getting your digitization technology uh, to a farmer or <clears throat> how was it for you? Yeah, initially we definitely did. So the advantage, but the only advantage we had was that uh, we had uh, good organizations with whom we have collaborated and they have solid ground presence. And mm -hmm. I mean, the barrier of communication and training the farmers was kind of I can say, taken care of. Okay. So, I do say definitely there are issues. There are still issues. I mean, uh, for a farmer to just come and start using an application and trusting it, I think it takes a bit of a time. So as an organization, we have to be patient on that. And you know, gradually these things pick up. So yes, we are in the third year of its uh, implementation. And uh, yes, we have reached out to say 20 plus organizations across the country. Uh, mm -hmm. We have reached out to state governments. We have reached out to you know, uh, central ministry as well. And we are definitely seeing very positive uh, signs. People have started uh, kind of talking about it. And you know, uh, there are very positive vibes coming from the field as well. So wherever farmers have used it, they are mm -hmm. definitely, you uh, know, I mean, we has we are seeing uh, increase in the numbers from our partner sites as well. So people who were doing say thousand, I mean, hundred farmers last year have come up with an approach of say we can do two thousand or three thousand farmers this season. It's like uh, multiple increases there. Definitely, yes, we can look into it. I mean, uh, there are a lot of things which are happening. So, so good, good. There's a lot of positive uh, things happen, and um, mm -hmm. one thing I must say here that I think. Uh, uh, COVID has actually uh, given us that platform wherein uh, uh, the mm -hmm. penetration of these digital things have actually uh, started. To, although it was a now very, you know, I mean, whatever happened along with COVID was bad, but this was one of the positive things which has happened uh, along with other which has happened at the uh, medical level. But yes, this was, I can say, the one of the positive effect of COVID that technology started uh, penetrating into the rural areas and farmers or the rural community also understood that i mean this is the future and we will have to be on this we have to understand this and uh, you can see uh, you know, people in uh, villages now sitting in chopals and you know watching videos on youtube yeah. and understanding and discussing it so that's a very common phenomenon nowadays in 
feeling. Yes, 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 pretty much actually. Yes, COVID has brought technology, uh, you know, has really uh, uh, given technology space in every every uh, st uh, every area as such, every sector as such, be it rural or urban. Uh, so uh, that that has I think worked for uh, most of the ag tech companies as such, where we where they were able to take the technology, or the farmer was more open to it because uh, you know they had no other way but to go. Uh, but to use some kind of a technology for connecting with the rest of the world. So, uh, because physically connection was not, uh, not possible at that point of time. So people were exploring different, uh, you know, communicating channels, so which worked. So that's, that, that's nice to hear. I mean, you know, a positive note coming in from there. So Dr. Akhani is back with us. So uh, uh, doctor, you were talking of certain challenges that you faced. Uh, Dr. Bosley also, uh, you know, highlighted that you did have certain challenges, like you were planning to do 3000, but we were able to do only 2000 of them. And uh, that's because probably, uh, you know, uh, getting internet out there or having smartphones out there. So, so these are, these were some of the issues that, uh, you know, were highlighted. But, uh, you know, how did you, how did you finally manage to take the technology, even to those 2000 uh, farmers out there? I mean, how did you overcome these challenges that were, that came your way? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you're right, ma'am. Uh, yes, first challenge is, of course, network issues. Just before yeah. yes, yes, I was yes. something from the same time yeah. with the it's whole, just not uh, the farmer. <laughs> so, with that, challenge or we can't uh, in a one day or in one scene uh, resolve this issue of course after all it is a technology but yes for uh, farmers when we reach to the villages now we realize that they are really interested but need to provide the services up to them uh, so first if we have gone through the uh, meet personally with the farmers with the help of the kvk team we have reached to the farmers through the field visits uh, then group meetings, over calls, and then we have started to educate them about the applications or the technology, we can say. Major issue is that the old generation people are not easily or much takes away, okay? So for them, we have to ask them about the WhatsApp and uh, Facebook. Usually they use or the look for the videos and all. Similarly, we ask them to simply like a WhatsApp video call, you can use the application for the advisory where uh, in our Khetipadi farm application we have the provision through advisory in a one click uh, the farmers reach up to the Pune office and we can solve their group. We have to educate them first. Once they understood then they easily uh, accepted the technology and uh, day by day as they are aware about the use of it, how can use it and uh, reg on regular call we are able to solve this technology and yes of course uh, no doubt we have the system also offline also. So we have the hybrid solution because we can't say that it, today we solve the issue, but tomorrow may again due to the rainfall and literally for continuous two to three days, there was no electricity. In such cases, we have the offline service also. So we have the provision of the online and offline so that uh, farmers are in continuous touch with the database, whatever we have provided them, they are able to reach uh, or the, we can capture their data and later we can contact with them for their solutions because suddenly if there is a pest population increase in population and if they want to reach us so in that case for a particular stage they can capture their data and immediately we can communicate with them so over the calls uh, then uh, field visits group meetings to the kvk team with the help of them we have solved this uh, we can say not permanent but village level issues and move away uh, to reach the technology up to the farmers Right, right. Uh, uh, Dr. Kadar, you work with corporates, like, uh, so do you directly go to the farmer? I mean, how do you take your, these better cotton standards? Uh, you know, you, you also issue a license of better cotton standards as such. So how do you take these standards to the farmers? I mean, uh, you know, what is your uh, way of working or your uh, modus operandi, if I can ask you? Thank you. I think it's very much similar to what other people have been talking. <laughs> but maybe I can explain a little bit. So how we work, we work through uh, our members. So we have membership organization, which are our program partners in every country. So for example, in India, we have a series of program partners. So the program partners are supposed to interact with the farmers. So they go to the village, they will organize a group of 30 to 40 farmers. We call them a learning group. And then 
for example, a group of 100 learning group will be called one producer unit. So one producer unit will be an area where cotton will be growing. So basically the licensing is issued to one producer unit after they meet our, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of standards or requirement as, as uh, part of the BSS. However, how the things work at LG level, the learning group level are very much similar to what Dr. Bosley was mentioning and Dr. Tripathi was mentioning that there is a, you can say it's a kind of ex extended form of extension work. So although there is a government extension services as well, but the program partner would go to the farmers, organize them into a group of 30 and 40 and use the similar methods which has been presented over here that however we'll be taking them across all the cotton season right from the land preparation to the selling of the cotton so we will start interacting with them at the land preparation stage there will be a series of uh, you can say capacity building events those capacity building events can be in the form of a training or in the form of a demo plot like dr bosley has mentioned because it's really really very wonderful to explain in certain cases we do have uh, you know, conventional plot and demo plot as well to train farmers understand why a particular technology works better. And when we say technology, for example, let's take this example of pheromone traps, or for example, let's take example of any water uh, reducing technology, which is introduced to them. So they can see the difference that, okay, in, in their conventional way of doing things, uh, they have to apply more water, more pesticide fertilizer. But if they go with uh, an improved way of, let's say, using organic uh, fertilizer. So how the reduction of, you know, the sustainable methods work. So this is how the things are structured. So program partner will uh, work on the training capacity building, or you can say extend, providing extension service to those learning groups. Those learning group will uh, again follow a series of, you know, standard practices. And at the end of the day, looking at their data, during this whole course, they will be maintaining their data for every farm. We call it farmer field book. Uh, so they will be maintaining that. Principally, they are maintaining the inputs and outputs, whatever they have applying in terms of water, in terms of pesticide fertilizer, what pesticide is being applied, how the labor is being managed. Uh, there shouldn't be any incidence of, uh, let's say, forced labor or uh, under underage labor. So, you know, looking at these principles, so if a group of farmers follow all the standard. At the end of the day, we have our assessment mechanism. So based on that assessment, that PU is licensed to uh, have, you know, better cotton. So this is one aspect. And on the other side, better cotton is working with the larger brands who are creating demand for better cotton or sustainable cotton. So they are asking for that sustainable cotton. So that demand from the top level triggers to the factories. It comes to the ginners. And from the bottom side, we are working with the farmers as well as to the ginners, right? So we say, we tell them, okay, these are the farmers working in this area who are licensed and you can get and buy uh, cotton from them. So this is how we try to, you know, support the value chain in maintaining a sustainability and traceability. But I think most of the solution which has been discussed by uh, Tripathi sir and uh, Bosley sir, they are very much the same. And you know the kind of challenges which has been mentioned by uh, Dr. Ashwini, they are also very much there. For example, in terms of, although I understand that in most of the countries, including India, Pakistan, and Africa, the mobile penetration rate is increasing, and there now there are more and more people who are aware, and with the use of mobiles and particularly with the Android devices, it's very much there. However, still the adoption in farmer. Uh, particularly adoption of technology to take a decision, I think that will still take a lot of time. I can tell from some of the experiences that generally in a village, a farmer is very much influenced by what other farmers are doing. Mm -hmm. So for example, if a group of farmers starts putting pesticide, so for example, as a farmer, I will more probably be applying per, uh, pesticide without considering that my cotton crop is under that level of severe attack or not, you know? So this is where the extension part comes in and where, you know, the reliance on technology goes at a secondary stage. 
that maybe the application or advisory is telling him or her that you know your crop does not need that application yet but since it's happening with the neighboring farmers so farmer has to take that decision because they cannot take any risk particularly with the cotton uh, right. so i think the behavioral changes in the cotton farmers still they are not you can say uh, trusting technology to its full extent you can say for example if it is a matter of taking decision based on technology solely particularly with the small farmers this is the uh, scenario so right. that is where we still need to you know do a lot of effort and uh, bring it closer to the reality thank you right right so uh, you know pretty much the landscape remains the same no matter where you are the challenges remain the same and uh, so does the way that you go around also remains the same uh, but it was uh, uh, it was it was good to know as such i mean you are building kind of a you know pyramid uh, the top down uh, you know the knowledge is passed on that's how you build it up and then you link it to the uh, uh you know the consumer and uh, you know that's how you complete the cycle as uh, as such so there is some incentive for the farmer out there where you give them a buyer uh, as well so I, i'm sure that is one of the reasons also why people keep uh, getting uh, you know uh, more and more people uh, you know start following those standards so that you know they have uh, somebody who is going to show, surely buy out their uh, stuff whatever they are producing so that was good to know uh, dr ashwini uh, we you have been talking about technology and we have been talking about uh, technology challenges as well but uh, uh, as dr bhosle said that yes we were not able to reach 2000 but at least uh, 3000 but at least 2000 people we have reached out to so do you have any successful use cases which we have seen wherein the farmer uh, you know has benefited from digitization and uh, you know that you work in with all of these people in maharashtra as such yes of course not yes uh, definitely farmers are benefited there and they are much happy uh, with our applications or the we can say the service uh, start with the technology we have given yes definitely mobile application through mobile application we have uh, daily give the notifications about their activities for example so farmers from uh, i can give one or two examples of villages right if group of one village is there farmers are doing their practices regularly and getting the yield in between 6 to 8 quintals per acre and average yield from the parvani districts for cotton is normally 6 to up to 9 quintals per acre so uh, first we have given them the schedule with activities and the notifications their yield reach up to the 10 to 12 quintals per acre and these are the real examples we have recorded their uh, yields or the practices through our applications and just one simple example if you know when the uh, nipping one activity is there in cotton you have to just remove the tip of the portion of the cotton of branches so uh, they know the few practices but uh, they are just doing the irrigation the fertigation and all the but few practices like we educate them and they have followed through the application he was just using the regularly application and he got knows ki i have to do this practice to the vegetative schedule and he did that and that farmer get the yield increase similarly few farmers use our advisory through the video calls they regularly do the video calls from the farm early mornings they went to the field and if they found certain pest or disease there they immediately call us capture the images send the videos and so that immediately on the same day we can uh, send the query resolution to such peoples or the persons and immediately they do the applications of the pesticides whatever the recommendation it helps to definitely minimizes their cost in the multiple application of the sprays fertigation and they have got the exact resolution no doubt they are using their practices they are following the spray application but at what time of the crop growing stage rather it is old development stage or the flowering stage our role is to continuously educating them and timely follow the practices and like this uh, few new cultural practices we had adopted like trap crops we ask them to uh, do the trap cropping or the intercropping mist cropping it uh, no doubt only help in the increasing yield but also minimizes their cost in cultivations uh, improve their quality of the yield and out this happens for from to this 2000 uh, farmers also this gis technology farmers got the uh, later on few farmers uh, they are asking for us ki 
uh, ma'am could you please give me the that yellow image to me and please explain ki what is the dark color what is meant by the yellow color we are just explain that ki if there is a full green color you are okay with your crop so you don't worry but if there is a slightly light color yellow color yes we have to analyze the more the issue and we did the same thing simply in their language explain them what is no uh, if you went on the field and asked them the uh, to use the ndi technology they were not definitely you had to ask them ki just check the color of your uh, whatever the crop you have grown whether it is completely dark green or light green or the yellow then they slowly adapt the technology understand ki what we are telling them and what is the use of it. and we have really experienced this on the ground level and then we have the multiple numbers of farmers and you know guys ki in field uh, mouse spread is really worked out if it is experienced by the two or three farmers whole village is following him and they are going to adapt the technologies and this we uh, with the help of the kvk we gone through the multiple farmers and we are happy that ki we have increased their yield not much but up to uh, literally 25 to 30% increase in yield uh, under this permanent district of village so that's it yes that is great so uh, i mean word of mouth works as such and seeing is believing is what uh, you know works in the farming sector i guess uh so nice to hear about these use cases you know where you found some success and the farmer is also wanting to know about the technology i mean you know that curiosity has started which i'm sure will take uh, will go a long way so uh, dr kadar so we are talking of digitization we are talking of taking technology to the farmers and the farmers have also started responding as such so uh, but uh, you know when you when you are talking about these corporate partners do they have a key matrix for uh, sustainability initiative measurement or reporting i mean how do how do they go about it i think there are different metrics but many of them are still evolving so i can tell at least about the better cotton so for for instance we have set up our strategy for 2030 which is basically sets our goals organizational goal for uh, you know leading to sustainability right and right. we are working on preparing some kind of matrices which can work across countries mm -hmm. uh, and help us you know measure our impact in terms of what change we have brought in you know in a particular area in a landscape uh wherever we are working so i think most most important things which we are trying to do is to see a change in water reduction we are trying to see a change in reduction in pesticide and fertilizer uh and we are looking at the soil health very closely uh, we are looking at uh, carbon footprint but it that mostly goes after the uh, uh crop so for example in the supply chain uh, side mostly so cotton footprint and then as an associated components we are we wanted to see the change in terms of how the gender behaviors are women ownership uh, and decent work particularly so these are the domains we are working on so most of the metrics is are being built uh, across that so if i tell you within uh, the organization uh, although you know this debate has been uh, quite a bit in the organization but it's very recently that we have started extensively working on that for last 2 3 years so we started working on developing field data policy field data standards which can really really take care of the data privacy of each and every farmer and can fetch only the you can say very necessary results data and which can take us uh, which can tell us how we are improving uh, in terms of sustainability and how we can actually close the feedback loop that is also one of the most important thing uh, i think which we are facing challenges with so the thing is that it's generally easy to fetch the data although not that easy but still it's straight forward to interact with the farmer and fetch the data and then that data goes to the top level and then there are certain decisions are made however making that closing that chain so quickly that farmer can get benefit out of that decision that is something really critical which dr ashwini was also referring to that as a farmer i am providing the data let's say to an app to a solution to a program partner or anyone but i need the processing of the data so fast that i can make some decision immediately and next week on my crop or so on and so on so you know those things are still uh, i think 
taking time and we need to give more thought on that how to make our solutions uh, or define our solutions and standard in a way that they can actually help farmers take solutions uh, decisions based on the technology and improve their production so that yeah. challenge is that there right and uh, also uh, you know but of course the other day when we were talking we were talking about traceability you know so is traceability the main aspect which is like majorly impacted uh, you know or driven in this whole cycle by uh, uh, you know by some of the stakeholders do you do you feel so that i was uh, on that day i was mentioning that recently there is an increased demand for traceability in cotton as well so for example previously it has been with other food commodities you know you go anywhere in us and they will tell you okay this is the rice coming from india this is salt coming from this part of the uh, world or this mango is coming from this part of so you know the traceability in food commodities were very much there but now there is an increasing demand rather very pressing demand for traceability in cotton so that is now asking for so previously the traceability used to exist at let's say a mill level so for example we knew the country of origin or maybe to mill level but now they are asking for going a bit deeper uh, at least knowing the region or area if not farmer at least the village from where that cotton is being grown so this demand for traceability in itself is asking for the technological penetration across all the stakeholders who are working with uh, you know cotton so that whether they are the producers or they are the handlers of the cotton or the ginners or onward you know fabric ma makers or uh, you know designers so i think i was referring to this fact that this new demand for traceability is now actually opening ways why and how technology can stay penetrate you know so it can be another disruptive uh, thing just like covid so it was an external thing but it forced farmers to you know work on uh, technology and get them familiar so now the traceability is going to be the next uh, thing which is now happening and asking for more and more technological penetration into the whole yes. supply chain thank you yes traceability is going to be the new buzzword in every sector i guess so uh, including agriculture uh, i'm sure because people want to know uh, so, what is coming consumers on. yeah consumers are now more aware ultimately yes. users are now more environmentally conscious and socially aware so they want to know okay uh, they want solution they can just maybe scan a qr code and they can see what is the you know, uh, whether the the process which has been followed is environmentally sensitive and you know it's a sustainable process or not so that is something which is uh, adding a lot of value right right yeah. so we have a slight crunch of time out here so uh, you know but there are many questions coming in uh, you know from different uh, places uh, tripathi sir i think you have already answered but there was some uh, there was uh, there was a listener who was asking for uh, you know uh, for your app i mean you know if you could just tell us uh, where the app is available name of the app yeah so uh, the application that we have generated is called as cotton ace uh, c o t t o n a c e and it's an cotton ace yes cotton ace and it is an android based uh, uh, application and it's very much easily available on the play store so anybody who wishes to uh, kind of use it or promote it in their area, in their own area or in their fields i think it's very much available at play store and they can download it and start using it yeah the basic uh, difference would be that uh, it will ask for three set of questions initially about after the registration are you an extension worker or you are in, uh, i mean what kind of farming you are going to do is it uh, organic or inorganic and uh, it will ask for what kind of uh, protocol you wish to use whether it's a cicr protocol or an uh, no, uh, weekly uh, basis that you want to do and uh, second uh, and another question that you'll ask for whether you're going to monitor your crop or just want to use the application because uh, we are we have also given uh, a, a segment in it wherein uh, farm can actually get a weather based advisory and they can understand whether to go about uh, spraying or not or whether they can uh, they wish to do irrigation or not if there is an say this for example if there is a uh, monsoon uh, or a shower predicted two days later and if they have to spray they should avoid it so if it is like that then they can take a call on the basis of that 
and uh, we have also integrated the uh, Monday prices there. So that's another advantage that the farmer can get. And uh, yeah, the moment he says I want to monitor it, so accordingly he would be registered as a lead farmer there. And uh, I mean, then the process remains very pretty simple. Once the trap is installed, he has to uh, download that. Uh, I mean, empty that uh, trap on a white piece of paper. Take the image. So it will count the count and identify the test and give the advisory. Right. So uh, right. Cotton is it is <laughs> raise the cotton cultivation. Great. So uh, there are a few more questions. There's a question from Akash uh, Ashwin, ma'am. If you can take this one as to he he's trying to know that you know we have different regional uh, variations. You know different practices across. Uh, you know when we go to different landscapes. So these farmer extension services, do you think they'll be effective, or what change do you think that they should be brought in so that uh, you know they are applicable and uh, they they can create the same results in different landscapes also? Yeah, uh, there's no issue as we know that if we are going to grow one crop, yes, as per the region wise, the slightly changes in the practices as per your the soil moisture and soil testing parameters. So it is not like that ki, uh, if you are changing your landscape, you have to do the much in. Yes, first initial step, you have to do the analysis of the different factors and based on that, through the applications, we can cater the multiple landscape for the regions. As you know that we are capturing the locations. With the help of the locations, we can capture their data and based on that, we can provide the service on the various regions. And we have the customized schedulers. So even if you are at the different locations or the farmers are practicing the different uh, methods of the cultivation for any crop. So as we are talking about the cotton, so if you are growing the crops on the base, we are growing on the only simple uh, lysing method. So based on their own practices or the base of the growing, we can view the recommendations or we can cater the service. And as we know that our application is not limited with the region, uh, we can customize the service Based on that, we can uh, uh, improve their practices and the services. Right. And uh, I think along with this, if we can also have this in different languages, uh, I, I guess that will also aid in you know, having uh, the relatability in different landscapes as well. Yes. So, uh, Tripathi, so there is another one that is your way, that comes your way, you know, so any innovative approaches or technologies that can be implemented uh, for sustainability cultivation and sustainability reporting, like, you know, so that we have accurate measurements of sustainability. So anything that has been worked out uh, on that front? I think as an organization, we are also working on that uh, technology, which we call as a digital farmer diary. Okay. So, uh, so the basic idea is, uh, uh, I mean, there is an issue that we have faced while working with uh, BCI on that. I mean, as uh, Kadir mentioned, that farmer field book is one of the important criteria, okay. and uh, yeah. data management is one of the important factor. And I think this applies to any of the certification agency where documentation of the process is more important. Right. I mean, this is I don't say more important; it's like very important. Okay. So. And, and in Indian context, where you have the majority of the farmers who are either illiterate or kind of don't uh, write, read and write the things. So I think given that context, uh, we have started uh, working on an uh, AI model where actually the farmer speaks to the, uh, on the mobile phone. Suppose we have uh, created a screen and he has done a pesticide spray today. And he clicks on the pesticide spray and uh, there's a, there will be a question which will be popped up to him. So this, uh, there will be I mean text to voice thing which will be asking the question to the farmer. Okay, so did you do, uh, do a spray today? So he says yes. So then it goes to the next screen and says what was the pesticide? So if he knows, then he can write it down or speak it out. Or if he doesn't know it, then he can take the image of the uh, bottle or the bag or the sack, and then it extract the data set from there. And and if he says, for example, if he says that I have used say one bag of uh, this particular particular fertilizer. In my field. So from the data which has been extracted from the, you know, uh, I mean, on the packet, it will calculate and give the answer. Yes, so this is the quantity which has been applied to a particular acre of field. I mean, I can say that that is itself is a basis or the platform from which the certification agency can start looking at it. 
and more importantly this is going to be dynamic and uh, no, uh, real time basis so if there is any deviation that as an implementing partner we want to make that will that would be the time so so that's a uh, work in progress yeah maybe uh, another 6 7 months we should be there Right. So I have an interesting question here from Uzbekistan, uh, you know, for large cotton farming in uh, Indorama Agro. And his question is, how does NDVI work? Uh, sir, in, uh, you know, we would like to answer that, but maybe not on this forum. But if you can put in your email ID, maybe uh, Dr. Ashini, who works a lot on GIS and NDVI, will be able to uh, respond to that one. Thank you so much, Shankar, for joining in. Uh, sir, uh, and there was another interesting question by Sangeeta Lada. So, uh, uh, Dr. Kadar, if you can take this or anyone on the panel, any carbon credit program ongoing with cotton growers in the country? I mean, wherein the carbon credit is eventually transferred because we are also waiting, uh, you know, when will this happen or uh, when will this carbon credits actually reach farmers? So, any initiatives on that end? Uh, not yet, known to my knowledge. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's it's still in uh, nascent state, Sangeeta, but I, I'm sure uh, there are the policymakers are already watching and working on it, and uh, surely we should have something uh, soon coming out out there. All of us are waiting yes, out there. Just yeah. Just a point here. Yeah. Um, carbon credit uh, transfers have started, but yes, it, okay. it's still not in cotton. So because I have worked with one of the yes. in Paddy, so it has started. Yes. So that's yes, it has started. I think Bayer is working on a big for an agency like BCI to take it up. <laughs> correct, 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 correct. I think, uh, yes, uh, Paddy, uh, it has started in a few places. I think Bayer is working on a big way. IPL is working as well. Uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, so, so that's great. So surely, I mean, it's not long before it reaches cotton as well. So that is, that's nice. Uh, okay, so I do have, I, I don't have much time. So I'll be taking a couple of more questions and then, uh, you know, we'll have to wrap up the session. So uh, there is one more for you, Dr. Kadir. I mean, you know, when considering the socio-economic implications of cotton farming in India, you know, which uh, what aspects do you think should be incorporated into sustainability reporting? You know, where uh, the socio-economic uh, impact comes in. So uh, is there anything specific that has to be incorporated uh, when we are doing all this sustainability reporting? Yeah, I think from the socio-economic perspective, the major uh, concerns comes in terms of uh, when we say the number of family members who are involved in cotton and whether they are paid members, unpaid members, and you know the concerns about uh, underage uh, labor. So from the socio-economic perspective, these are the dimensions which are mostly uh, highlighted and we have to focus more with our program partner. Other concerns like which are related to environment, soil, health, water stewardship, that is fairly uniform. But these are the areas uh, you can say, for example, which highlight the women involvement in cotton picking or overall cotton uh, cultivation, uh, consideration about um, you know child engagement, or for example, any incidents of, uh, uh, you can say, forced labor, those has to be uh, taken care of very specifically if we want to, you know, move forward. And these are particularly related to India, Pakistan, and you know, our region. So this is very much has to be taken care. Of. Thank you. Right, right. Uh, Dr. Bhosle, uh, you know, there was a question for you as well. You know, what are the significant barriers? Uh, ki, matlab, sustainable practices. If we have farmers, uh, lana hai, India ke especially, so you know, major se hurdles hote hain jo humko overcome karne padenge, aur wo extension services ke through hum solve kar payenge kya? Haan, definitely man. Sustainable uh, cotton production ke baare mein hume jana hai to uh, basically jo hai jo proper uh, crop residue management is important thing. Previous crop residue management. Then after that, uh, uh, mixed or uh, uh, crop rotation is. Uh, Zeruri hape mixed crop pattern or crop rotation or intercropping or border row cropping like this. Then uh, uh, need to have the seed treatment mechanism is both important hai, jo pe lacking hai. Then uh, another is the soil test based uh, integrated nutrient management. That is soil test based INM. AB both important uh, sustainable cotton production ke liye. Then conservation of beneficial uh, insect. Uh, for this purpose, we have to use the biopesticide. Obek important parameter. Hai. 
जैसे सर ने यहाँ पे अभी डिस्कस हुआ है जो यूज ऑफ येलो स्टिकी स्टेप या फिर ट्रैप्स मैकेनिकल एंड अदर कल्चरल मेथड सर there then uh, etl based spraying that is an important thing uh, etl based spraying of recommended uh, insecticide and avoid the cocktail uh, cocktail spraying avoid karna chahiye ya schedule aur kuch farmers calendar spraying bhi karte hai wo bhi avoid karna chahiye aur uh, last uh, that, that is an irrigation management uh, this yeah. is also an important thing avoid the flood irrigation use the uh, alternate uh, row irrigation or uh, drip irrigation other method irrigation that will save the water तो so, ये जो कुछ कॉटन प्रोडक्शन टेक्नोलॉजी में जो कुछ पैरामीटर अगर हमें ऐड कर दे तो थोड़ा सस्टेनेबिलिटी की तरफ जा सकते हैं thank you so better cotton does not guarantee any premium prices and we do not uh, say that that is the reason why a farmer should you know go for these practices but uh, in reality for example when we talk to ginners so they say that we do offer a little bit more if a farmer is coming uh, with better cotton because they have that particular demand already coming to them so although we do not guarantee or would ever say that you know if you follow these practices as organic cotton so for example generally for organic cotton you get a premium price but not for better cotton however in reality we have seen you know those things happening and we don't have a study which can uh, say that okay this will be maybe a specific percentage which someone can get higher it's totally upon the uh, market how it works right Right. Yeah. Well, it's it's really good to see so many questions. I mean, uh, you know, so much. Uh, it just shows that so much of interest uh, has been generated where uh, you know cotton uh, cultivation and sustainability and digit. I mean, these are just three varied subjects that we are bringing uh, together. But uh, you know, good to see that people have started taking note of it, and that's the reason why we have so many questions out here. so uh, it was uh, you know i would really like to end this with a few concluding remarks from each one of you on the impact and adaptability of digitization that we see for sustainable uh, cotton production so if each of you can just quickly uh, you know tell us as to what do you feel on digitization uh, being an important tool or do you think it's a challenge when we are talking of sustainable cultivation and taking these practices to the farmers uh, you know can we can we just start off with uh, uh, dr uh, uh, mr tripathi please yeah according to me uh, the technology is a facilitator so yeah. whatever process are happening uh, it can improve its efficiency it can improve its outreach it can improve the performance it can improve the workability so i mean there are a lot of things which it can improve but yes definitely in order to use it there has to be an ecosystem as uh, kabir very clearly mentioned that uh, you know trust is one of the factors wherein you uh, know you will have to uh, kind of uh, spend a lot of human resource and uh, a lot of effort have to be placed in there and for that to happen as an ecosystem players i mean whoever is there so whether it is a, a channel partner or a engineer or a producer or a government for for that matter or an ngo everybody will have to kind of create that facilitate that whole thing so that actually farmer can start using it and i think once that that starts to happen whatever technology that we are bringing in i mean the uh, this will be the platform this will be a platform on which the whatever kind of structure we want to build it can be done whether it is ai ml right now or you never know how the things will change and something new will come in so everything can be kind of built over it so this a technology is a facilitator of the entire system i can say and only facilitator right. right thank you thank you thank you mr riparty uh, dr ashwini would you like to go next yeah uh, definitely uh, the session we heard about yes and it we are uh, talking till about the carbon credit in the cotton and yes today we are talking or the speaking about the carbon credit yes definitely the to implement the uh, modern te uh, techniques on the farmer or to the farmers the digital technology is the only one way in today eras we can say and we have to use it and we need to think more on it ki 
how can we uh, provide or um, make farmers more handy to use such technology we have lots of research works on the cotton we are thinking about the sustainable cotton but parallelly we have to work or we need to use the such applications or any digital technology like gis and uh, need to implement on the farm or educate the farmers this program should parallelly run so that can be whatever the we are doing whole around the for all farming so it will reach on the for the benefits of farmers it will definitely work and uh, will reach very soon hope so yeah. thank you so much uh, dr bhosle aap kya kehna chahenge is baat par ki aapko kya lagta hai technology ek challenge hai ya ek rasta hai jisse hum uh you know your digitalization ka jo rasta hai isse hum aur sustainability ki aur ja payenge definitely ek bahut bade rasta hai agar farmers ne ise adopt kar diya to definitely crop yield mein bhi improvement ho jayegi quality mein bhi improvement ho jayegi aur uh, other thing is that also reduce the risk and cost of cultivation over the other activities so it is a good way digital farming services for the farmer and uh, ye farmer farmer in farming community ke liye bahut achhi hogi aur ye ये आने वाले कल में यही एक बड़ा सोल्यूशन है जो हमें एक्सटेंशन वर्कर के लिए एक हैंडी होगा अच्छे और फार्मर्स के लिए भी इसका फायदा जरूर होगा थैंक यू थैंक यू डॉक्टर फाइनली डॉक्टर कादिर वी वुड लाइक टू हियर योर व्यूज एज वेल थैंक यू आई वुड स्ट्रेट अवे से दैट वी डोंट सी अ फ्यूचर विदाउट टेक्नोलॉजी एट ऑल एट बेटर कॉटन सो ड्यूरिंग आवर वेरी रिसेंट uh meeting where all the you know different two country represented were there and they had a very good discussions so everyone was clear that the kind of target we are setting for as part of our 2030 strategy it is un we are unable to achieve that if we don't take consideration of technology into that so technology is important to us not only from the perspective of precision agriculture on ground but we are also uh, taking care of you know disruptive technology such as remote sensing Uh, such as iot such as uh, gis as uh, dr sabha has mentioned so those things we are do taking taking into consideration and at better cotton we have a our digitalization strategy till 2030 that actually chalks out uh, the importance of you know technological intervention into different areas of uh, not only cotton production but as well as supply chain and traceability as well so uh, we being uh, initiative to ensure sustainability in cotton are very much into it and uh, looking forward to welcome you know different technological advancement that are happening and uh, looking forward to partner with them on these kind of scalability aspects as well thank you i'm sure i'm sure many more to come out there so well that was there was pretty astute perception on the topic and thank you so much so the use cases of sample sizes uh, surely point towards a brighter and better future for the cotton landscape though it does seem like a task uphill for us to drive the stakeholders of cotton cultivation towards sustainability but with application right intent right application right adaptation of digitization at farmer and corporate end uh you know this this surely seems pretty much the way to go so thank you everyone for joining us and uh, we'll definitely come back with more thank you panelists for such an interesting discussion we'll see you soon thank you thank you very much thank you everyone